Hi, my name is Christoph Lindner. I'm from Germany and I started two and a half years ago an online marketing business in Germany. Had you had any experience with the internet before that? I had no experience. I was working as an engineer in a um, plant manufacturing company and I had no idea that uh, stuff like this exists actually. Whoop. But I got inspired by um, a, a book from written by Evan Pagan. Uh, when he started his business out, he wrote uh, the book Double Your Dating. Um, I got that book and I found the marketing fascinating, I found the content fascinating, the whole business model very fascinating, and that brought me into the whole business. So, how did you dive in? So what I did was, I thought, this thing is so good and it's running well in the US, and uh, I even bought it from Germany, so it's, it's uh, so popular. I thought, why don't we have it in Germany too? So I had this idea and I flew to LA, I spoke to Evan Pagan about uh, how we could do a German version of his product and uh, we figured out a licensing deal and uh, within this licensing deal I started to translate the ebook, generate a sales page, a payment system and got some traffic to the site and I had my business running. And at first, of course, it was besides my main business. I still had my job and I did this all in my free time, the evenings, on the weekends. And now it changed a bit. Let's talk about that. So uh, give us some idea of the timing. So you started working, translating. And tell us a little bit about the, the content, by the way. What's the fundamental content on the site? The content of that site was uh, self-help, personality growth, and dating advice for men. Okay. Uh, and you figure those are things that uh, will sell in Germany too. Right. <laughs> this is what I thought. Everybody, every young guy needs maybe some help or wants to improve himself. So I thought there's a demand in Germany as well. And when you put up the site, uh, do you have help? I had help for, from, from friends of mine who knew some programming. I had no idea about how to program a payment system. When I started, I didn't know that there are a payment system you could just buy and implement in your page, so I thought I had to do it on my own. And we did it on, my, on our own, actually. We created our own unique payment system, which we don't use anymore. Um, but back then, it was the, the best choice for us. And what year are we talking, by the way? When, when did this happen? You said two and a half years ago. Yeah, um, so at the beginning, uh, everything took very long because I didn't have much time to do it. So I started this two and a half years ago, and then two years ago, we had the product finished and it was out, and we sold our first two copies on the first day. The first two copies on the first day? Yeah. All right, and tell me about the growth of your business since then. So what happened then was, uh, I, I got my business partner jumping into the business, so we were two people working then. I quit my job, so we were two people that, were, that worked full time on it. And uh, while I was in LA, I not only met Evan Pagan, I met, um, I met another person in the fitness industry. In the, um, he, he wrote an ebook about how to build muscle when you work out. It is No Nonsense Muscle Building from Vince Del Monde. And as a side project, we started a little license contract with him too and translated his product as well. We, we set up the site and we started out actually on the first day from, of that product, we sold around, I think, 600 copies. So this side project that we started as something that we wanted to have a look at too, um, started to, to become the huge winner of our business. And Vince Damondi introduced us then to other people in the fitness industry. And now we have seven licenses, six in the fitness industry. We're working on three new right now. We have this uh, um, dating advice license. We're working on a dating advice um, self-help ebook for women right now. And we sold products, we sold ebooks, we sold video products, we have audio programs uh, worth of maybe two and a half or three million dollars so far. We have eight people now working in the company. We get three new that, that work on a half time basis right now, but they might join the company pretty soon. And it's, it's, it's growing even quicker than it has. We come in faster and faster and faster. This whole thing is, is taking speed in Germany. I think the huge wave of digital products and sales that are marketing, this, this kind of direct marketing, just the, the wave comes over to Germany right now. That's fantastic. What are some of the uh, early mistakes you made? If you talk about sort of what you wish you could have undone or uh, things that you did not do that you should have done, anything like that. So for example, I thought when I write the ebook and I'm finished with that ebook, I thought I'm done. Just like the people will be, they, they will be hungry to buy my ebook, I will become a millionaire very quickly, and uh, it will be all uh, finished. Which is not not the truth. So, um, 
I, you have to do a lot of marketing. After you have your product finished, you need to find traffic. So this is a customer generation that you have to do. And you need to work on your conversion on your page. You need to get the traffic or the leads that you need to your web page to convert. And sometimes people concentrate, and I did that too, too much on only content creation, for example. And then instead of the taking the time and putting some energy into traffic generation, they start working on another content product, for example. And let's talk about traffic generation then. What have you found are the, uh, the best techniques uh, for generating traffic? So if you have some money, then a good technique uh, is uh, pay-per-click marketing. And I know many people say that if you start out with pay-per-click marketing, you should use Google AdWords and only the search network. We actually get 90% of our traffic from the content network. Um, maybe because in the fitness branch we have products that uh, a very large group is interested in. It's, it's uh, like the, the we have a weight loss product, for example. That's something you can advertise on, on any page, actually. And we get we get mainly un, un uh, like the cold traffic, so not very targeted traffic to our page. But so the page converts as good as so good that we can um, pay for the traffic. Yeah. If you don't have money and you want to generate some traffic and you're just starting out, I think a good way to generate some traffic is to find people in your business niche that have lists, that have already customers, that might be interested in your product as well. That's the best way of generating traffic by far of all, all the techniques. This is what I think. Then, of course, you can try to put text and, text and articles on a lot of pages, try to get just your, your message out there without paying for it. So no, no pay-per-click marketing, but wherever you can put an article for free in forums or, or threads, things like that, that's a good way of so, doing it. And so, so right now, you guys both, you, you deliver your own content, you create your own content, but you're also serving as an affiliate, you're selling other people's content as well? Yeah, so we somehow, um, we, we approach our business that these products that we created are somehow our own products, like we, we think, like a little bit like McDonald's. So when people open up a restaurant of McDonald's, they can take all their marketing, their branding, and they have some rules how to do it. But it's still, the restaurant manager is, is himself responsible for, for the restaurant. That's with our um, licenses as well. So we perceive them as our own products. We try to grow them. We try to market them. We do our own traffic as well. Although most of the traffic comes from affiliates. So the, the, the biggest part of it. We do some traffic by Facebook, for example. Facebook is a very cheap and effective uh, traffic source right now. Tell us how you do that. Everyone wonders, I mean, they want to have a social media presence, but the question is how to translate that social media presence into website traffic that then becomes part of your list. I mean. Okay, so we, we always wanted to go for the, for the big game, so not, not for the small numbers. I can't tell much about how you build fan pages and then generate a couple of sales. This is uh, cheap, so it doesn't cost anything. Uh, there are others that, may, that can talk better about that. I know how you can pay for traffic on Facebook, generate uh, huge volumes of traffic. And of course, then you need, a, uh, you need a page that converts very well, otherwise you will just spend your money for nothing, of course. And it's just a lot of testing. And there also sometimes I think it's better to think a little bit bigger as it's harder if you, if you have a very low amount of money and you want to try something out. If you, for example, have $100 you want to spend on Facebook, it's very likely that you spend $100 and you will not get like $200 in return because, because you have not optimized your campaigns, you have not optimized your web page yet. If you are willing to spend, let's say, $5,000, for example, and you think you can live with that, that if you only get $4,000 in, in return, that's something that you, that you can invest, and then after that, maybe you spend another $5,000, you get $6,000 back, you have your $1,000 back again, and then the next time you make money with that. That is better because then you can start testing things. You can put up more ads, you can test some ads, you can set up different pages where you lead the, lead the traffic to and, and test your, your pages, how, how they convert. Do a lot of split tests. And uh, when we talk about split tests, if you, if you do split tests, that's very good, that's very effective, that's uh, the best thing you can do. If you don't have the time or the money to do split tests, just copy and model what other people do. Get to know the people who are in your industry or in similar industries and that have successful business and ask them. The best thing is contact them, ask them how, how did you do that. 
this whole business is so open. Most of the people are willing to share with you, to help you, to help you out. So that's very interesting. So the bottom line is you have to spend enough money to get enough research to have sort of enough data to be able to figure out which ads work and which don't. Actually, this is maybe not what people want to hear because they want to start with $50 and earn $75 and then start growing. But uh, I think that's reality. Yeah, That's great. Um, are you comfortable sharing anything about uh, statistics in terms of your site, number of visitors, number of units sold, things like that? So um, we have around 100,000 uh, visitors per day on our sites right wow. now. We had uh, days That's a single site? Or that is a, it's a group of sites. We have yeah we have seven sites and thirteen products right now. Okay. And uh, most of the traffic, let's say eighty thousand out of that, one hundred thousand goes to one side, and then fifteen thousand to the second, and the other five have the rest of it. So, okay. So we have, we have two big licenses. The others are still growing. And yeah, conversion is around zero point five percent for cold traffic, which is actually very good. Conversion, I always say conversion is not conversion. If people talk about conversion, you definitely you also have to talk about where the traffic comes from. We have a page, for example, where um, the traffic converts by 4.5%, wow. which is very good. Um, but we sell around one ebook, or every two days we sell one ebook. Or one one ebook a day. We have another page that converts at 0.5%, or we sell 500 ebooks a day. So that means. One page has very specific targeted traffic and it converts very well, but if we would send cold traffic to that page, it might only convert at 0.1% or 0.2%. That other page would have, would have had maybe, would have had a conversion of 7 or 10% with very specific targeted traffic, and it only converts at 0.5%, but with huge volumes of cold traffic. And the website converts just much better, even the, the number is smaller. Well, I mean, one thing that's clear is that you guys, I don't know if you're using Google Analytics, but you're making sure you understand statistics related to your site. You know who's coming, where they're coming from, how long they're spending on squeeze pages, etc. correct? That's it. We have Google Analytics on our page, that's right. And we do split testing with a Google AdWords split testing tool. That's a free tool that's great and worked out very well for us. What else do we do? We we actually, we do, as I said, some split tests on our own, but we always look out um, into the other industry areas and look out what is working well there. Who have huge traffic volumes on their pages? You can look that up at Alexa, for example. Alexa is a tool. Which one is that? Alexa.com. Yeah. That's a page where you can put in any website URL and it will show you the statistics of how much traffic it, it gets per day on its page. And that is very helpful for um, analyzing what your competitors or, or, or what other people in your industry are doing. So what we try to do is we want to find the, the, those pages that have really high volumes of traffic, that are really big, and then we want to analyze what they do on their site. If, what kind of video they have on their site, what kind of text they use, if they have an emotional story, how is that emotional story set up? Does it have specific elements that we can get out of that page that we might use to, to write our new own page with, and, and add those elements to our page to make it better? This is actually a little bit the, the, the shortcut around testing. Because testing takes a lot of time, a lot of effort, a lot of money, you need high volumes, otherwise you come up with tests where you're not sure if the result is really um, speaking something, if you yeah. can really rely on that result. Yeah, yeah. That's just fascinating. Anything happening in Germany, either uh, with technology or what, anything you're seeing in Germany that you think may be applicable to American either consumers, vendors, or affiliates? In other words, the lessons learned that we can pick up from something y'all are doing overseas. What is, I think, very interesting for American vendors, for example, right now, is to just take the opportunity and bring their product to the German market, for example. And there are two ways how you could do it, and one way is much better than the other one. You can find external translators in America that translate your stuff, and you can try to do it from the US and somehow work with your systems and your translations and sell it on the German market. This is, from my experience, not how it works out well, and this is not the way um, how you will succeed. Better, what you can do is find a team in Germany that helps you do that, and that can not only translate your marketing, for example, 
but also understands what digital marketing is about, what, how you, um, how the emotional story is affecting the customer, and how the how the emotional decision in the customer um, builds up that he decides to buy a product, so they can adjust the marketing a little. For example, in America or here in the U.S., you have pages that are really very hyped. The U.S. people love hype pages. They want to hear how perfect they are and what they all will get when they buy that product. The Germans are a little bit more, if they hear that, they ask themselves, is that really true what the, what the person says there? Can, can I have the same thing? And if you give um, more, let's say, more realistic, a more realistic and not as hyped point of view on your product, it will convert better and they will like it better. So slightly more skeptical and decidedly more reserved is the German audience. Yeah, and more convincible by numbers, for example. If you have nice numbers and you like, show, show us, them... Show us the evidence. Like lo logical reasons um, for, for buying the product, th that will be very convincing to a German customer. And it's interesting because what you're describing about the German consumer may be very different from the Italian or the Spanish or the French consumer. That's right. I would hook up definitely with native speakers, with people from that country, if you want to expand your business into the European market. That's Those people might take a share of that, that's right, but uh, then the business can be just much bigger than if you try to translate it here in the US and some will work from here. That's, that's very difficult. Uh, a couple more questions and let you go, Christoph. Uh, first of all, tell us a little bit more about your family background. What does your family think now that you're, you've, you've left your traditional engineering job and you're, uh, you're right. working in this new space? Yeah, I, I'm, I'm not doing what my parents wanted me to do, actually. They would have loved to see me in a big company, working there, of course, uh, a very wearing safe a job. Wearing a suit, coat and tie. <laughs> exactly. Uh, I don't do that. I started my business on my own. But my parents were super supportive. I needed some money at first. Of course, we had to invest a little bit because we, besides to make money, we need to live on something. My, my parents supported me, lend us some money. It's great. And uh, I come from a background. My, my father is a professor at a university for maths. Um, so. I was an engineer, so somehow I come from that background. My, my mother was a teacher as well. They, they both retired now. And uh, I think, yeah, you, you can always do what your parents want you to do, but uh, it might not take you far. There, there's a point in, in your life where you have to say, I'm responsible for my life. And there are a lot of people that have good advice for you and tell you do this, do that, but you, you have to know on your own what's good for you. How old are you? 32. That's terrific. Um, Let's talk about ClickBank and then we'll finish up. You have uh, you work with ClickBank? Yes. Tell us a little bit about what ClickBank does for you. So ClickBank is the payment processing tool on our page. So when people come to our site and they want to buy it, they click on the Buy Now button. They go to the ClickBank page, give in their credit card number at ClickBank, and then after that they land on our page, again, where they can download the product. That's one thing that ClickBank does. But uh, the other thing that ClickBank does, which is even better, is ClickBank connects affiliates with vendors. I as a vendor can put my product up on the ClickBank marketplace and then all the affiliates that are there in ClickBank, ClickBank has a lot of affiliates, they see that product in the marketplace and if they think it's a good fit, they start generating traffic for you. And we don't even know the names of people that generate traffic for our product. And it would be like much harder to find all these people by our own and contact them, hey, do you want to like do some traffic for us, we we'll, we'll give you 75% commission and all that. This is what ClickBank does for us and it really helped, helped our business. That's fantastic. Closing remarks, any, uh, any, any cautionary words or counsel, advice for someone who is trying to uh, either get into the business or someone who's already there but maybe hasn't experienced your success? Find your mastermind group, this is one thing. Find other people that do the same stuff and do what you're passionate about, tell them about what you're going to do and get help and talk about people what you're going to do and find mentors that might help you that are already are one, two, three levels further in, in front of you. Ask them what they did, how they can help you. The people are so open in this market, it's really, it's, it's gorgeous. They don't see each other as competitors. They see, hey, if you start growing a list, maybe we can do endorsed marketing later. So I will help you a little bit and I might benefit from it later. This is my advice. Find people to help you. Christoph, thanks very much. Okay, thank you, Stuart. Pleasure. It was a pleasure. It was great. You were yeah. terrific.